Hey there, Orioles fans. Today is Wednesday, April 6th, 2022, and welcome back in to the Locked on Orioles podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I'm your host, Connor Newcomb, and coming up on today's episode, I take my final crack at predicting the Orioles opening day 28-player roster that they will take to the trop on Friday for opening day. I'll talk about which pitchers will be replacing the spots that would have been there for Colt Sulser and Tanner Scott, but now that they're traded, which two relievers will now make the team. I'll talk about what the bench might look like for the Orioles. Is DJ Stewart going to get enough at-bats to be back? And is Jorge Mateo okay after being hit by a pitch in Tuesday's spring training game? I'll also talk about who's going to round out the rotation, what the starting lineup could look like as well. And that's all coming up on this final opening day roster prediction episode of the Locked On Orioles podcast. You are Locked On Orioles, your daily Baltimore Orioles podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So today, it is Orioles opening day roster prediction 2.0. I made my initial prediction last Monday. If you want to go check that one out here on the Locked On Orioles feed, uh, you can check it out. And I know that one's already wrong because I predicted Kyle Bradish on that roster, first of all. That's not happening. And then, obviously, I had Tanner Scott and Cole Solser on that roster. That's not happening. Obviously, they play for the Miami Marlins now, and Kyle Bradish, of course, is starting the year in AAA. But I'll get to my revised prediction, which hopefully goes 28 for 28. But before I get there, just wanted to thank you for making Locked on Orioles your first podcast listen of the day. Locked on Orioles is free and available on all podcast listening platforms, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Google Pods, Stitcher, Odyssey, wherever you listen. It's free every single day. Monday through Friday, we got a brand new episode of the podcast out. So if you're liking the pod, make sure to tell your friends, tell your family, tell all the Orioles fans you know. Locked on Orioles, your only daily Orioles podcast out there. And thank you guys for making, you know, this week, this month, the best month in podcast history. The month of March was our best month ever in terms of listens. Launched the YouTube channel this month as well. And of course, if you are watching right here on YouTube, make sure to hit that red subscribe button here on YouTube. Uh, Leave a comment about what you think about, you know, what I talk about every video. Leave a comment about, you know, who you think will be on the Orioles opening day roster. Put your full opening day roster prediction in the comments as well. And uh, you'll get a shout out if you uh, get it 28 for 28. And also uh, remember to like the videos and tell everybody we're on YouTube as well. But, you know, you guys, uh, thanks again for for watching Monday's video as I broke down the trade of Cole Salser and Tanner Scott over to the Miami Marlins. Most listened to episode in terms of at least a 24-hour stretch uh, in this podcast history. So we thank you again for that. And thank you again for making Locked on Orioles your first listen of the day. But for your first listen today, opening day roster prediction 2.0. I didn't get it on the first try, but that's okay. I left myself room for a second try. So we're going to look at the pitchers. We're going to look at the hitters. Then give a full recap of the roster. And then do a little Orioles news and notes at the end of the episode. So. Let's start with the pitchers, and let's start with the locks of the pitchers. And frankly, there are much less pitching locks than there are hitting locks right now in this Orioles roster, and a lot of that has to do with the trade that just happened. Cole Salser and Tanner Scott go to the Marlins. They were two absolute locks to make the Orioles bullpen. Now there's two spots open. So to me right now, there's seven locks in terms of pitchers. Obviously, you start with the starting rotation. John Means, lock. Jordan Lyles, a lock. Tyler Wells, how about his performance in his final spring training outing on Tuesday? Struck out six batters, you know, seven batters, I believe. Three and two-thirds innings, scoreless. Uh, He had six strikeouts through, or five strikeouts through two innings. He was, stuff was good. Apparently, game was a broadcast, but the writers that were there said stuff was good. Yeah, Wells is a lock. And... I get the argument for this not being the case, but to me, Bruce Zimmerman is still a lock. You know, he's jumbled up with all these other guys. He's been starting on regular rest throughout spring training. He had the most consistent 2021, even though he had the injuries. I'm putting him as a lock. And then kind of surprisingly in the bullpen, 
there's three locks right now. It's Dylan Tate, it's Jorge Lopez, and it's Paul Fry. And I get that Paul Fry was terrible at the end of last year, but the Orioles, you know, paid him a contract in arbitration. He's a big league guy and he's been good before. He's got to be a lock because there's not a lot of those after the trade with the Marlins. So there's your seven pitching locks. And, you know, what's crazy about it is you kind of look at who's left in camp and, and who would at least legitimately have a shot. And here's another thing. I had Zach Lowther predicted on my initial prediction. He was sent down to minor league camp on Tuesday. It looks like he'll join the Norfolk Tides fairly soon as they started their season Tuesday night. So as Lowther's out of the picture. So theoretically, there are seven spots for pitchers open out of kind of the roster bubble. I'm still operating on the assumption that the Orioles will go with 14 pitchers and 14 hitters on the opening day roster. Now, they could theoretically go with 15 pitchers and 13 hitters, but because there are no restrictions. But once the rosters get cut to 26 players, that starts on May 1st, it has to be 13 hitters, 13 pitchers. You can't carry 14 of one. So, but right now the Orioles could carry more. So maybe they go 15 pitchers, but I think at the end of the day, it's going to be a 14 and 14 split. So seven lock pitchers means seven bubble pitchers. And really, when you look at it, there's 10 names kind of competing right now, which is crazy to think about. But yeah, it's 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 10 names seemingly competing for seven spots. So here's the seven names I think make this team. I'll start with CNL Perez because this guy has been nails through another scoreless outing on Tuesday. Looks like he'll finish up spring training with six scoreless outings out of the bullpen. Remember, Perez is the left-hander who the Orioles claimed off waivers from the Reds before the lockout, had been in the bigs with Houston for a couple years, and then spent uh, most of the year in the big leagues with Cincinnati last season. Stats weren't great, but he's got some good stuff. He was a, a highly touted prospect with the Astros, obviously the connection to Michael Elias. He's been so good, he's he's in there. So that's pitcher number eight. Six spots remaining. The next one, I'm going to give it to another waiver claimant, Brian Baker. You know, another guy who's been good this spring training, right-hander who the Orioles claimed off waivers from the Blue Jays before the lockout. He was a closer at AAA in Buffalo last year, made one major league appearance with Toronto. He has options, so he could certainly go down to AAA, but he's already on the 40-man. He's pitched well. I think they give Baker a chance. So there's, there's two pitchers put on the board. How about give me Mike Bauman? You know, he's been pretty good this spring training. Just threw two and a third scoreless out of the bullpen on Sunday. Came in in a bases loaded, no outs jam and got out of it. You know, Bauman, I think, would still like to be a starter long term. And the Orioles are still going to give him that chance. But he's been pretty good as a reliever. And he was, of course, a reliever when he came up at the end of 2021. He's the guy who I think out of this kind of middle group of pitching prospects that are kind of getting to the big leagues now. I think he's got the best chance of becoming a dominant reliever. And I've said that multiple times here on this pod. Maybe you just make him a reliever. I, I wouldn't be mad at that. But here's the other thing. You know, the Orioles have talked about this piggybacking. If you have Mike Bauman on the roster, even if he doesn't start the year as a specific piggyback guy, because I think there's a chance we start the year with kind of two piggyback scenarios out of the five spots in the rotation. And even if Bauman isn't one of those guys, he can easily become one of those guys, and you can pitch him in multiple innings out of the bullpen. I think you kind of need him on this roster. You need to give him a chance. He's a top 10 prospect. Michael Bauman is my third guy on the list. Fourth spot, Keegan Aiken. You know, it's looked okay at times in camp. It's been bad at times in camp. It was bad a lot of last year. We know there's extenuating circumstances as well with Keegan Aiken, but at the end of the day, the Orioles still want to see what they have out of Aiken. And, I mean, we're kind of at the point where it's like, do I want Keegan Aiken on the Orioles? Maybe not. But at the end of the day, who else are you going to give a spot to? He's on the 40-man. He's been in the big since 2020. You got to give him another look. Will he be in the rotation? He'll be in some combination of one of those piggyback guys or a rotation piece, but Keegan Aiken is on there. So he'd be the fourth selection. And then, to be honest with you, throw Dean Kramer in there, number five as well. I think just like Keegan Aiken, you know, he's had his ups and downs during spring training and in his major league career. But with these spots of Solcer and Scott gone, you just got to give these spots to Kramer now, whether he's a full-time starter, whether he's a piggyback guy, whether he's a bullpen arm, I don't know. 
But I think just like Aiken and Bauman, they're going to be on the roster. I don't know exactly what their roles are going to be, but I think they're going to be on the opening day roster. So that's five of the seven. So two spots remaining. And I think there's kind of a definitely a drop off here with these two spots remaining. It's basically five names who ha have a chance. Felix Bautista, Joey Crable, Chris Ellis, Spencer Watkins, and Travis Lakins. That's kind of your, your next five guys. And two of them are going to get on this roster. I'm going to give the first spot to Felix Bautista. The stuffs look good. He's still in Major League Camp. Orioles obviously added him to the 40-man roster this offseason to protect him from a Rule 5 draft that ended up not happening. But there's a reason a guy who was never really a prospect got added and, and went from Aberdeen to Bowie to Norfolk last year and then got added to the 40-man. The Orioles believe in this guy. He's got great stuff. He's shown it off in spring training. Big right-hander, hard fastball, good breaking ball, fall off the table changeup. You know, especially, especially with Solcer and Scott gone, I think he's the beneficiary here of that trade. I don't think he was going to make it, but now with Cole Solcer gone, I think Felix Bautista can step right into not Solcer's role, but kind of backfill, you know, as Tate goes into Solcer's role and Fry goes into Scott's role and the roles push up and push up and push up. The backfill is Felix Bautista. So that leaves one more spot. And, you know, do you, do you go with Ellis or Watkins, the guy who can start and give you more length? Or do you go with Lakins, who's been around the longest with the Orioles coming off the injury? Or do you go with Crable, who, if you're going to have it be a reliever, probably has shown you the best stuff? And I'm going to go with Joey Crable. He had a tough start to his spring trading, but his last couple of outings have been good. The stuff has looked good. He came over from the Rays. And kind of the last thing with Joey Crable... If you say there's one spot for these four guys, Crable, Watkins, Ellis, and Lakins, Crable is the only one out of the four that is currently on the 40-man roster, and it just makes the Orioles' lives a lot easier if they choose Crable instead of one of these other guys and you know maybe have to make a DFA move because, as we'll get to in the hitters, the Orioles have two open 40-man spots because of the Salser and Scott trade, but that has to go to your backup catcher and to potentially Chris Owings to make this roster. So you'd have to make a 40-man corresponding move to get Chris Ellis or Spencer Watkins or Travis Lakins on this opening day roster. And there's not that much of a difference, I think, between those guys and Crable. And Crable showed some good stuff you know, when he came over from the Rays at the end of the year last year. So I'd give him that final bullpen spot. So there are your 14 pitchers. But now, time to turn it to the 14 hitters. The question is, who will those hitters be? And as I talked about, you know, there's more locks in the hitter side. It's just facts. I think there's 10 locks on the hitter side. There's a little bit of an asterisk as I record this here late on Tuesday night. I was kind of waiting for some potential Jorge Mateo news. So let's start with Jorge Mateo. I think he's a lock on this roster. He's had a really good spring. He can play the infield. He can play the outfield. He brings speed on the base paths, and he's hit some homers this spring as well. But the issue with Mateo is he was out of the lineup for a few days. He was back. He gets hit on the hand in Tuesday's spring training game. He leaves the game. The Orioles said after the game that they're calling it a hand contusion, but they haven't done any extra testing. They didn't get any x-ray results. Was waiting for that to come out. It did not come out, as I record this here, after 10 p.m. Eastern time on Tuesday night. So as of this recording time, I'm going off the assumption that Jorge Mateo is healthy for opening day. But he did come directly out of the game after getting hit in the hand. And so if there is some sort of issue injury-wise, obviously he'll start on the IL and his spot will be open. But for now, we'll assume that Jorge Mateo is on the roster. So he is lock number one. Number two, obviously Trey Mancini, Ryan Mountcastle in there as well, Cedric Mullins, Austin Hayes, Anthony Santander, Ramon Arias, Robinson Chirinos. And then there's two guys who I think I'm going to put them as locks for now. You can have an argument that they're not, and I would totally get it. Number one is Ryan McKenna. I get that he hasn't had a lot of success at the major league level, but he's your perfect fourth outfielder for this team, and I think he's a lock. And then the other is Rugnet Odor. I get that he's been bad in the majors, hasn't been very good this spring training, but he's one of the three players the Orioles gave a major league contract to. He's got some of the most big league experience on this entire Orioles team. I think just for that fact alone, you at least start the season with Rugnet Odor. So there's your 10 locks in terms of hitters which again, I'm predicting the Orioles keep 14 hitters, 14 pitchers on the 28-man opening day roster, which leaves four spots for essentially 
the bench, although it's really a five-man bench because you're keeping 14 hitters. I had more than nine locks. So there's four spots. Spot number one has to go to a backup catcher. Currently, only Robinson Chirinos and Mike Elias said earlier this week definitively that Adley Rutschman would not be ready for the start of the season with either the Tides or the Orioles. Of course, the Tides started their season Tuesday night. He wasn't there, and he won't be ready with the Orioles because of that triceps injury. Now, he did start to swing finally and throw a little bit, so that is good. He is progressing through the injury, but not going to be ready for opening day. So we know Robinson Chirinos is the starting catcher. You got three options of backup catcher. Anthony Benboom, Jacob Nottingham, Bo Taylor. They all kind of bring different things. We talked about this with Nathan Ruiz back on Friday's episode. Nottingham, the best hitter of the three. You know, it's questionable who's the best defender. It's probably Bo Taylor out of the three. And then Ben Boom does bring you the left-handed bat that's better than Taylor's. The age is kind of different. You know, Nottingham is the youngest of them all. Nottingham has the, the best stats at the major league level. And although he's not the best defender out of the three, he's still solid. I'm just taking Jacob Nottingham. And there's an argument to be made that maybe you keep a guy like Bo Taylor, who's 32 years old, because you assume Adley Rutschman will be ready in two weeks. You just play Taylor behind Chirinos once a week for two weeks, and then you DFA him when Adley's ready and you don't really worry about it, where you say, oh, you know, if you really like Nottingham and you want to keep him, why would you, you know, have him for two weeks and then have to be DFA'd and, and risk losing him? I'm going to take Nottingham. Now, I will say, there is the off chance that it has to be Ben Boom or Taylor because Nottingham is not in the organization in the next couple of days. Because remember, our old friend Pedro Severino got hit with an 80-game PED suspension on Tuesday. Now, Severino was set to be the backup catcher for the Milwaukee Brewers after he had signed there in the offseason, kind of replacing the spot that Jacob Nottingham used to hold for the Brewers. Now, Milwaukee did not have a lot of backup options for Severino in camp. So they've been kind of blindsided by the suspension to Severino. And the question kind of becomes, who is their backup catcher option? I would not be surprised if the Brewers called up Mike Elias and said, hey, we would like our old friend Jacob Nottingham back. Here's a prospect. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. That's with no insider knowledge or reporting on it. Just wouldn't be surprised if it happened. If that did happen, honestly, I might take Bo Taylor as the backup catcher. But... We'll take Nottingham for now. So that leaves three spots left. One of them obviously goes to Kelvin Gutierrez. I want to move him in the lock category. I really do. And the spring training has been strong. You know, going into play on Tuesday, he was eight out of 22. That's 364. He had a homer, six RBIs, five walks to four strikeouts in spring training. The gloves elite. But the bat can get so bad at times. We've seen at the major league level. I'm not going to put him as a lock, but. He's on the roster. So that leaves two spots left. I'm going to give one to Chris Owings. I think especially because the Orioles now have, you know, two open 40-man spots. One is going to go to Jacob Nottingham, presumably, because he's on a minor league deal. And the other one goes to Chris Owings, who was signed to a minor league deal. You know, he's been solid in spring training, six for 22. He's got a homer, four RBIs. But at the end of the day, you look at the roster, and Mike Elias likes guys with versatility. Chris Owings has a lot of major league experience, which I think would be a good thing for this team. And listen, he can play third. He can play short. He can play second. He can play left, center, right. He be, he can be a veteran leader for this team. I mean, I think how long he stays with the Orioles, who knows, but he's been mainly a shortstop, and they kind of don't have that shortstop guy. I think it would just be helpful to have Owings on the roster, so I'm going to take him in the third spot. And now... There's one more spot. And basically, unless the Orioles carry three catchers, which I don't think they'll do with 28 guys, you have three names for one spot. It's Tyler Nevin, it's DJ Stewart, and it's Richie Martin. So the question is, do you want Martin, who hasn't hit well in his career? You've seen a lot of at the big league level, but, but hit well down the stretch in 2019 hit okay down the stretch last year after the injury and has torn it up in spring training. You know, he's nine for 19. He's got a homer. He's got, you know, nine RBIs. He's hitting almost, you know, 500. Do you want to take that chance? And remember with Richie Martin, he would give you a true shortstop. Now he's not the greatest defensive shortstop, but he's pretty good there defensively. You don't have another true shortstop on the roster in camp at all, except for Richie Martin. 
that would help a lot, even if he's not playing every day. And the Orioles have tried him in the outfield a little bit. He can play second base. He's a little bit versatile. Or do you want Tyler Nevin, who I think had a good showing right at the end of last year when he came back up with the Orioles? He can play first. He can play third. He can play right field. He can play left field. He is a high on base hitter. He's got a really good batter's eye. He's got some pop in the bat. We saw him hit that monstrous home run for his first career dinger uh, in Toronto in the last series of the Major League season last year. I really like Tyler Nevin. I would take him. But if he's healthy, I think it's going to go to DJ Stewart. He has returned to spring training games this week after being hit in the hand a couple of weeks ago. Orioles are trying to to maximize his at-bats. They hit him leadoff in the Tuesday game just to get him his most at-bats as possible. He's getting a lot of at-bats on the backfields. It seems like he'll be healthy and ready to go for Friday. Now, what kind of role does he play? I don't know because he's not really a fourth outfielder, not a good defender. He's kind of a left-handed DH bat pinch hitter on this roster. You know, and he's probably taken up the 28th and final spot. But I think the O's will give DJ Stewart one more chance because, you know, listen, he, despite a 200 average, he had, you know, a, a, an OBP over 320 last year. Like he still gets on base, has a really good batter's eye and can still hit the ball out of the ballpark at times. The rest of his game is not good, but I think they're going to give him that spot. Now, how long he stays in Oriole, we will see, but I think he gets that final spot as a hitter. Now, there is a couple of caveats. I think caveat A, if Jorge Mateo is hurt and has to start on the IL, I think Richie Martin will take his spot. If DJ Stewart is not ready and has to start on the IL, I think Tyler Nevin will take his spot. So there's still a chance for Nevin and for Martin if either of those guys are hurt. We really still don't know the full answer there. Here's I record after 10 o'clock Eastern time on Tuesday night. But... There it is. There is the 28 guys. And I'll, uh, I'll break all of those 28 guys down in just a second. But first, got to tell you about Built Bar because, you know, you go through this whole roster, there's some tough decisions to make. Even for me, you know, I'm not the real decision maker. I'm just doing the hypotheticals, but it's still tough decisions. And I need to keep the energy up. And, and, and Built Bar helps that because Built Bar is the protein bar that tastes just like a candy bar. It's crazy how they continue to do this. You think, they can't keep making these protein bars that taste good. At the end of the day, you eat enough protein bars. You're just like, I know they're helping me out, but this doesn't taste good. That's not the case for Built Bar. They taste delicious. Covered in 100% real chocolate. Got great flavors like peanut butter brownie, my favorite. Mint chocolate. Just so many white chocolate brownie. I, across the board, great flavors. 17 grams of protein in every bar. Tastes like a candy bar. It doesn't get better than that. So head to built.com, use the promo code LOCKED15, and you'll get 15% off your order, these delicious and nutritious protein bars. Again, that is promo code LOCKED15 over at built.com. So we've got our final prediction, Orioles opening day roster prediction 2.0. Again, recording this here on Tuesday night, so maybe when you're watching this, listening to this on Wednesday, things have changed, you know. There is talk that the Orioles could make most of the roster decisions by Wednesday night. It has to be submitted by noon on Thursday. Of course, the Orioles don't play Thursday. They play Friday, but about half the league does open up on Thursday. They have to have the roster submitted in by then. It looks like they'll make the decisions by Wednesday night. Probably a lot of those decisions will trickle out Wednesday night, and then we'll get the full roster Thursday morning. But here is my final prediction. So let's kind of run through, you know, what we have on this prediction. We'll start with the starting rotation. Again, we know John Means goes on opening day. I would assume it's, you know, Jordan Lyles, Bruce Zimmerman, and then I put Tyler Wells, Keegan Aiken, and Dean Kramer in the starting rotation because there's going to be some piggybacking. We know Tyler Wells is not really going to go probably more than four innings in his first start. I would assume something maybe like a like a Kramer piggyback or an Aiken piggyback, and then the other guy starts the next game. And a guy like Mike Bauman could even be involved in this piggybacking as well. Uh, but that's kind of the six guys I see in the rotation. Now, not precisely a six-man rotation, but I put Aiken and Kramer in there because one of them is probably going to piggyback behind Tyler Wells. And then you go to the bullpen. Again, Jorge Lopez, Dylan Tate, and Paul Fry, they're going to be your high-leverage guys that you trust. And then you got kind of a lot of wild cards back there. Mike Bauman, Cienel Perez, Brian Baker, 
Felix Bautista and I had Joey Crable getting that final spot. You don't really know what you're going to get out of, of a lot of those guys there, but that's going to be Brandon Hyde's bullpen. And as I talked about on Monday's episode, you know, when you trade Scott and Solcer, yeah, you open up some spots for some younger guys, but Brandon Hyde's life gets even more difficult because those were two of his, at least at times, trustworthy relievers. And he's going to, you know, it's going to take the first full month of this season for him to figure out who those new trustworthy guys are. And, you know, things could get a little ugly while he tries to figure that out. Then, you know, just a, a little first crack at the opening day lineup. We know that Shane McClanahan, the left-hander, will be starting for the Rays on Friday. So against the left-hander, and this is assuming Jorge Mateo is okay and not injured. Again, we'll probably get that news Wednesday. You might have that news as you're listening to this, so keep that in mind. I don't have that news yet as I record this here late Tuesday night. But I have Cedric Mullins leading off playing center field. Ryan Mountcastle at first base hitting second. Trey Mancini DHing hitting third. Anthony Santander in right field hitting fourth. Austin Hayes in left field hitting fifth. Ramon Arias is out there playing second base and hitting sixth. Robinson Torino's doing the catching hitting seventh. Jorge Mateo at shortstop hitting eighth. And Kelvin Gutierrez in the nine hole playing third base. I will say if Mateo is injured, again, I would have Richie Martin on the team. And I would probably have Chris Owings taking over playing shortstop and hitting eighth in the lineup. And then there's the bench for opening day. Again, Jacob Nottingham as the backup catcher. Rugnet Odor on the bench because it's a lefty, but he'll play a lot against righties, I'm sure. Ryan McKenna on that bench. I have DJ Stewart on that bench. And then, of course, Chris Owings. But if Mateo's hurt, Owings goes into the opening day lineup and you add Richie Martin to the bench. And again, if DJ Stewart does end up, you know, not ready physically for opening day, you switch him out for Tyler Nevin on that bench. But those are the 28 guys. My final prediction for the Orioles opening day roster on Friday when they head down to the trop. We are just two days away. Exciting times. I know the roster doesn't look great. Maybe the Orioles won't win a lot of games again, but just excited to have Major League Baseball back. But there was some baseball back on Tuesday night, as it was minor league opening day on Tuesday. AAA started its play on Tuesday. They started a few days earlier. The rest of the full season affiliate minor leagues will also start on Friday uh, as the Orioles start, but AAA started on Tuesday, and the Norfolk Tides, of course, were in action. Now, they fell to the Charlotte Knights 3-1. to That is the Chicago White Sox AAA affiliate, but there were some positives for the Tides. Now, the offense wasn't really there I mean your best offensive performer probably Kyle Stowers who had a double and a walk and then was hit by a pitch and left the game Jorge Mateo and DJ Stewart style Stowers got hit in the hand by a pitch stayed in the game to run the bases and then came out the next inning so that's obviously something we'll monitor one of the Orioles top prospects but he did look pretty good at the plate but the pitching was solid listen Kevin Smith got the start on opening day for the Tides of course Kevin Smith the lefty who came over from the Mets in the Miguel Castro trade at the deadline in 2020. And he started the year last year at Bowie, looked really good, went up to Norfolk, and then kind of lost his control in AAA. Norfolk last year really struggled at times in Norfolk, tried to pull it back together at the end of the season. But he got the opening day start, and listen, the stuff wasn't his best, but he was still solid. Three and two-thirds, a run on two hits, three Ks, three walks. The only run he allowed was a home run hit by Carlos Perez in the fourth inning. Other than that, you know, the command wasn't great. He had the three walks. He also hit the second batter he faced on a pitch that was, you know, didn't like graze the elbow guard. Like it hit him square in the back against a lefty-lefty matchup. You know, I I watched most of the Kevin Smith start. The fastball command was iffy, but he had command of his other pitches at times, and he worked through some innings, and he got three strikeouts. And honestly, it was a positive sign for Kevin Smith. Marcos Duplan pitched an inning in the third scoreless. And then Ofelki Peralta pitched the final four innings of the game. He didn't start, but he actually had the biggest bulk load of any pitcher. Uh, he allowed two runs, one earned on six hits, a K and a walk. Uh, you know, it wasn't his best outing, but it was good to see Peralta up there at the triple A level. So Norfolk Tides are 0 and 1, but uh, they will continue to play this week. And we do know Grayson Rodriguez will start Friday night for the Norfolk Tides as well. And hey, it's minor league season. All the minor leagues full season affiliates have released their rosters. And again, everybody starts play on Friday. So that will be exciting to see. But of course, the major league team starts play on Friday as well. And that is where this gets so exciting because 
this Orioles team, you know, despite it's flaws. We're going to get Major League Baseball again on Friday. It felt like an even longer wait this offseason with the lockout, so very exciting. So we're going to focus fully on what this season could look like for the Orioles on tomorrow's episode, as it is our official Orioles preseason predictions slash awards episode. Matthew Ritchie is going to join us on the podcast once again, who writes for Baseball Prospectus and many other places and uh, has been a lifelong Orioles fan as well. He was on this pod after the John Means no-hitter. We had a great time chatting about that, and he'll come back on the pod tomorrow. We'll talk about who wins most valuable Oriole, who is the O's best reliever, who's their breakout star, who's the best rookie besides Adley this year. We will make our predictions coming up on tomorrow's episode. But until then, I'm Connor Newcomb, and this has been the Locked On Orioles podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.